PT-91 has its roots in the Soviet-era T-72 main battle tank, but the upgraded and more capable Tvardi was actually developed by the Poles. Shortly before the USSR fell apart, the Polish military was in the process of modernizing its equipment. But with the dissolution of the communist giant, the nation was left with no option but to continue independently. Using old but reliable Soviet technologies, as well as experimental programs of their own, the Polish eventually came up with an improved version of a Soviet main battle tank with enhanced mobility, armor, and firepower. Ironically, the Tvardi would later be deployed to combat the remnants of the same regime it was initially designed to fight alongside. National Pride During the Cold War, Poland was one of three countries that manufactured the Soviet T-72 main battle tank. The other countries were the USSR and Czechoslovakia. However, the Polish version of the tank had subtle yet significant differences that made it a machine of its own. At first, Poland produced several hundred T-72M M1 tanks for export. However, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the nation needed to modernize its own fleet. Fortunately, the country had the industrial capacity to do it independently. And as part of this modernization effort, a purely Polish program was initiated, resulting in the PT-91 tank. In the 1980s, Poland successfully modernized their obsolete T-55, resulting in the 55AM Merida. The successful enterprise convinced the general staff that this kind of effort was viable. As such, the Polish decided to radically update the T-72M1 in 1988. While the local T-72M1 was based on the T-72A, it had been upgraded with a 16mm additional glacis plate, and later became known as the T-72M1K, or T-72M1D in the Polish army. Even so, the project had a slow start, and it was soon decided that it would be more viable to purchase the latest Soviet T-72S, or T-80. However, the dissolution of the Soviet bloc changed their plans, and the project acquired renewed dynamism. For the most part, the Polish drew experience from the vastly superior T-72M Filk, or Wolf, a domestically produced iteration dating back to 1986, but not unveiled until 1989. The Wolf was equipped with either a Czech-built Kladivo FCS or a Polish Merida, and was fitted with a Radomka illumination-free night vision sight, an LAS Varda night sight, and an Obra laser illumination warning system, in addition to banks of Telur smoke dischargers, and an active protection made of the local Irawa 1-2 system. Although the Vilk project only produced a few experimental vehicles, it created a network of local suppliers that proved helpful in future projects. Tough as nails. The study for the Polish-designed PT-91 began immediately after the fall of the USSR. In July of 1991, the newly constituted Obram Design Bureau, which stands for Research and Development Center for Mechanical Appliances, was chosen to lead the project. Moreover, the project was executed by the Bumar Wabendi factory, which had prior experience producing T-72s under license. The designers and engineers gathered all the knowledge and experience they had from the cancelled Vilk project, and almost every critical component was modified in some way, except for the original construction hull. That part retained the characteristic glacis plate of the Wolf. In addition, the new development heavily capitalized on many features of the older model, such as the drivetrain and suspension units. In 1992, the Bumar Group, a military consortium, delivered the first prototype, paving the way for a pre-series of no less than 20 units to be delivered the following year. Meanwhile, the general staff pointed out several deficiencies of the T-72M without any complacency towards Western tanks. Among the most noticeable shortcomings were its limited mobility and insufficient armor, as well as primitive fire control and night vision systems. Furthermore, the tank had poor accuracy due to the mediocre stabilization system of its main gun. 
the manufacturer eventually addressed the tank's issues and enhanced its armor protection, fire control system, and engine, as well as the gun stabilization system. Thus was born the Tvardi, meaning tough or resilient. Level up. To increase mobility, the Tvardi was equipped with a Polish-built PZL Vola S12U diesel engine that provided 850 horsepower. Unlike the original power plant, the new engine featured new fuel and air injection systems, which allowed for a weight of 18.5 horsepower per ton. Moreover, it was coupled with a manual transmission, and power was transferred through torsion bar suspensions. The tank had a ground clearance of 39 centimeters and a fuel capacity of up to 1,000 liters allowing for an operational range of 650 to 700 kilometers, including the new extra fuel tanks. The maximum speed was established at 60 kilometers per hour on smooth terrain and up to 40 kilometers per hour on cross-country terrain. In terms of field performance, the Tvardi could climb a 60% gradient and stay stable on a 50% side slope. What's more, it could climb a vertical step of 85 centimeters, gap a trench no wider than 2.8 meters, and forward 1.4 meters of water while unprepared, or up to 5 meters with full preparation and a snorkel mounted. Later on, the PT-91 received an enhanced 1,000 horsepower S-1000 engine with a turbocharger to take it into the new century, increasing its top speed to roughly 75 kilometers per hour. And in terms of protection, the base was made of laminated, steel-welded, rolled homogeneous armor and composite front and side armor. Wiring. The Tvardi tank was armed with a 125mm smoothbore 2A46M main gun, which carried 42 rounds in its original Dolly Parton configuration, with an additional 22 rounds in a carousel. The gun was license built in Poland and had an elevation of minus 6 to 13 degrees. The Polish built auto loader increased the reloading speed and the rate of fire was between 8 to 10 rounds a minute. The front, side, and top armor of the tank were enhanced with indigenously developed Irawa expensive reactor armor blocks, a total of 394 covering the front of the hull and turret, with virtually no gaps in between. Compared to Soviet-era tanks, the new blocks improved overall protection by 30 to 75 percent, depending on the ammunition used. The secondary armament consisted of a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun and a roof-mounted 12.7mm machine gun. For active protection, it was fitted with a dozen smoke grenade launchers and laser and thermal signature decoys, as well as a collective BNC system and a Halon 1301 fire suppression system. Inside, the Soviet systems were replaced by newer models made in Slovakia, such as the USDK electronic display and wind sensor detecting crosswinds, and the driver was provided with the passive Knight Radomka sight. Other systems included the Drawa fire control system with a Polish PCD day sight, Israeli TES thermal elbow sight, Polish aiming sight POD-72, laser rangefinder, and PCO SSC-1 Obra-1 laser warning system. The Soviet tank. The PT-91 entered service in 1995, and a total of 285 examples were built up to 2009. In addition, many local components served to modernize several foreign main battle tanks, namely the Czech T-72M4CZ, the Georgian T-72 Sim-1, and the Indian T-72 Ajea Mark II. In 2023, the PT-91 once again garnered worldwide attention when Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki announced that Poland would deliver 60 tanks to Ukraine to help repel the Russian invasion, with 30 of them being Tvardis. The remaining tanks were upgraded Soviet-built T-72s. In addition to the tanks, Poland had promised to provide Ukraine with a batch of 14 German-built Leopard 2 tanks a month earlier, but the transfer was only recently officially approved by Berlin. Experts around the world have pointed out the irony that Poland, which was historically oppressed by Russia, created a better Soviet tank than they did and gave it to Ukraine to aid in their defense against Russian aggression. 
Thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe to Dark Tech and hit the like button to be notified about our newest content, which we publish regularly. And make sure to check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting anecdotes from modern history. Stay tuned.